Hello and welcome to Next Generation Behavioral Health. 10 minute tips for modernizing patient care. Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Armstrong. And I'm Dr. Julie Kinn. We develop health technology for military veterans and their families. We also travel around the country training military providers on the core competencies of how to integrate mobile health into clinical care. And in this podcast, we're going to answer some of the most common questions we hear. Yeah. And last time we talked about safely using apps. So this time I want to ask you, Christy, how do you prescribe an app to a patient? This is really one of the most common questions I get. The providers we train are behavioral health providers. They are not accustomed to prescribing anything. So what's been your experience with that? Well, I I really do like the word prescription because it implies something a little bit more formal than just, oh, hey, I used this mobile app. I liked it. You should try it too. And you made a really good point, which is most of the folks who we've trained in the past have been behavioral health care providers, but that's not the entire scope. More and more, we're learning that primary care providers, nurses, the whole range of our military care teams are interested in using technology to help their patients. So um, I might not have answered your question. What was it again? (laughs) I was curious of what what your thoughts and your experience has been. I mean, the thing about a prescription is the specificity involved is really going to help patients to remember what parts of the treatment that they're going to be in charge of doing in between sessions. So that's what's so important to me. It really engages them and it's collaborative. Okay, so I do have to disagree with one thing you said. I think we are used to prescribing, we as behavioral healthcare providers, we are used to prescribing homework, but we don't really talk about it as a prescription. Again, it's not that formal word. I know it's very common to assign automatic thought records or regular assessments. So I like to think of mobile apps as something that in the first couple of sessions, I've always got on hand to recommend, especially after an intake. I like recommending T2 Mood Tracker, which we talked a little bit about last time. And we're going to dive into that one a little bit more deeply in a couple more episodes. I like them to be getting started on tracking and getting used to the idea of building that insight. And also Virtual Hope Box is a good standby one because it's a general mood elevation app. And we know that sometimes coming in for the first session can can be a bit of a letdown because it is so intake interview focused Mm -hmm. that if you have a client or a patient who hasn't experienced therapy before, they are coming in that first time hoping they're going to leave feeling better. And sometimes talking about your presenting issue for 90 minutes doesn't help you feel a lot better. So I like to have a a tangible tool I can recommend in the intervening weeks. Absolutely. What about you? What do you prescribe most often? And, And how do you prescribe it? First of all, I'll answer your first question. So the the tools that I find just are the go-to tools for me. I mean, of course, we're in, we're military providers. So I stick with tools developed by the Department of Defense and VA. So my top go-to tools are Breathe Through Relax, which is breathing training, Mood Tracker, which like you said, allows our patients to track their moods, which almost any patient I've ever had, that's been a a, a key feature of the symptoms that they have. The other, my most favorite app is Virtual Hope Box. But the second part of the question, the question is, how do you prescribe it? Like what parts of the prescription are involved? What's sufficient for a prescription? So I think it's important to be specific, but not too specific. So what I want patients to know is what tool is going to be used, how it's going to fit into treatment and frequency of the expected use. I, and it, I know if I'm not specific about that. Like I want you to track your mood one time a day. They're either going to not do it at all, or I'm going to have a couple patients that are going to get a little too obsessed about it. Maybe do (laughs) it 20 times a day, you know, and that, and either one can happen. And I, I think it's really important to give them kind of right and left boundaries. And then they say, okay, I know the expectations and then they come in ready and then aren't nervous with not knowing what what to provide and what to do. I I like how you said you would indicate how it fits into treatment. I think that's really Mm -hmm. respectful. Like we wouldn't want to give somebody 
the Beck Depression inventory, have them fill it out, and then never talk about those results, right? Absolutely. So for example, if I'm providing treatment to a patient that's suffering from insomnia, and as a part of our treatment, I'm providing cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, or we call it CBTI, it would make a lot of sense for me to prescribe CBTI Coach, which is an outstanding mobile app developed by the VA and co-branded by us with the DOD. So how I might prescribe that is I might let them know, hey, this is a safe safe and secure app? Are you interested in integrating into care? Because, you know, if they're not, that's okay. We can do everything paper, pencil too. That's fine. But if they're interested in doing the app, I will be specific. I'll let them know, hey, I want you to track your sleep every day in the sleep diary. And I want you to do one sleep tool a day. And once a week, I'm going to have you do the sleep assessment that's embedded within that mobile app. And then the next, the, the next piece is saying, hey, you know what? And when you come next week, we're going to review that data together on your phone. Let them know that. And they know they're going to be held accountable. Absolutely. So one thing a lot of our providers have really liked is the prescription pads we make. And you can download Mm -hmm. these on our website and we'll provide a link in the show notes. Our prescription pads show the pictures of a lot of different mobile apps we've made and ones made by the VA and some really excellent websites. And they, they briefly state what problem area they can help with. And you can actually circle for them the the apps you want them to go download and there's instructions on them and then rip it off and give it to them just like a regular prescription. And if you're interested, you could always order these from us on our website. And anything you order from us is free, of course. Or you can print them yourself and and have them in your clinic. And sometimes it's a nice tangible thing for them to hold so they don't have to download something in the moment in front of you. Also, many of us, especially in military treatment Mm -hmm. facilities, don't have internet access in our offices. So we want to give them something to take home with them. And again, I think that's really helpful on after a first session or intake. Julie, those prescription pads, correct me if I'm wrong, they have been the absolute most popular thing for all behavioral health providers. I mean, really, we get thousands ordered and people love them. I I think Um, they're tied with the squishy hippos that we have to advertise (laughs) our Military Kids Connect website, but but it's a close second. The same thing is true for prescribing websites. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so on the back of those prescription pads, we have um, some of the top DOD websites, um, After Deployment, Military Kids Connect, and Sesame Street for military families. It goes back to that idea of let's more formalize this. Let's right. bring it into the next generation. That's the whole theme of this podcast, that using mobile apps and websites and technology as part of your care doesn't have to be a weird little thing you do on the side. No, let's make this part of treatment as usual. Completely. Well, listeners, please let us know what you think. Uh, check out the prescription pads and tell us how you think we could improve them for your practice. And uh, tell us what questions you'd like us to address in this series as we continue recording. So thank you so much for joining us today while we talk talked about how to prescribe apps to patients. Next Generation Behavioral Health is produced by the Defense Health Agency. Learn about our other free health resources like mobile apps, websites, and other podcasts on Facebook and Twitter at Military Health. Thanks so much for subscribing and rating us on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. And you know what, Christy? I think we did it in less than 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah, we don't have to refund any money this time. Great. (laughs) Talk to you all next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.